Greetings Facebook. This is my MacBook Pro review revisited. Now I've had a couple of months to uh, play with this thing. It's really give it a good test drive and feel as to how I like it on the day-to-day -day use. So this is the more complete review of it. So once again, do I think this is the best laptop I've ever owned? Yes I do. Now, so let's just go over the ports again, go over what, what, <coughs> what the laptop is. So it's a 13 inch MacBook Pro with Retina display and on the right side you have the following port, SD card slot, HDMI output and USB 3.0 and on the other side it's going to be USB 3.0 headphone jack out and two Thunderbolt 2.0 ports and a power port right there that's MagSafe. Now given the fact that there's a USB port on both sides of the machine I do like that because you can have one USB right here, you can have another USB right here, and because of that, you won't be blocking any access to the other port. So let's get into the guts of this now. This is a... Now this right here is a retina display, which means that the pixels are supposed to be so small that the individual pixels are, you can't, you can't distinguish individual pixels because they're so fine. At a native resolution, this has a 2560 by 1600 display. So that's four times the number of pixels as a standard MacBook Pro. So if you pick up the non-retina version, this is four times as many pixels. We have the uh, backlit keyboard, which is one of my favorite things about the Macs, is that all of them come with a standard backlit keyboard. And, you know, surprisingly, this is a pretty thin laptop. So when you have the screen open, and when you're working with it, the key travel is actually pretty good. Um, coming into this, I didn't think that the keys would be as comfortable as my old one. But believe it or not, the keys are actually quite good. You can hear a good click on it and you can press down on the buttons. And I have no trouble typing with it, even though it's such a small space. And of course, we have the uh, glass trackpad. And this supports... Uh, Gestures like zooming, zooming out, rotating, all of that stuff. You can do that with this. So let's talk about computing power. This has a dual core, 2.6 gigahertz uh, core i5 processor. So that means it has two physical cores, but it's hyper-threaded. So the machine will be able to operate on four separate th threads at the same time. I believe it overclocks to 3.1 gigahertz that takes place when uh, when you're working in a single threaded application and uh, it's able to uh, throttle down one core and increase the overclock of the other core to 3.1 gigahertz so that's something that's unique to Intel processors <sighs> um, so performance wise okay I'm coming from a from a 2.2 gigahertz quad core 15 inch MacBook Pro. That's the one that I had before. And then coming into this one, you can tell that this machine is not as fast as the uh, old MacBook that I had. Um, I put on many meters. Let me just turn it on. I put on many meters on the uh, on this computer, and I know the CPU utilization will generally spike from say if I were using 28 percent on my old laptop. The CPU monitor on this would give me how much? Like 50%. So this this machine is it's roughly half as fast as my old uh, quad core. But do I really need all that power? Not really. Because I'm not compressing show video as much as I used to. I mean, I there are just less shows that I go to, so I thought that uh I needed a really hardcore video editing machine, but when I got the 15 inch MacBook, my, my last one, that didn't turn out to be the case. And I figured like, okay, why do I need that much power if I'm not gonna be compressing video anymore? So I got this. And this is good, this is good for YouTube, it's good for Netflix, it's good for other high bandwidth applications because Roadrunner increased our bandwidth speeds from 15 megabits per second and now all of us are on uh, 50 megabits per second. So that's how much Roadrunner gave us a nice boost. 
as well as the uh, upload speed is now five megabits per second before everyone on Road Runner only had one. And as far as I can tell, the speed boost is free because the cable bill stayed the same. So 50 megabits for the hell of it, why not? That's actually a good thing for uh, Road Runner. Um, let me see. The flash drive is really, really fast. It's silly, silly fast. So here, I'm gonna load the Black Magic the speed test. Now keep in mind that the SSD in here is it's on a stick, but it's the interface is going through a PCI 3.0 port, a uh, serial PCI. Shit, I forget what the standard is anymore. Anyways, it runs on the PCI bus, and because of that, you're able to bypass the bandwidth of the SATA3, which is like, so before the internal storage used to connect using SATA3, and you would get about maybe five or 600 megabit bandwidth on SATA3, but now that we're hooked up to the PCI bus, bypassing the SATA interface, this is what we get. So, Write speeds comes out pretty fast, 630 megabits per second, or megabytes, so 640 megabytes per second. And over on this one, we're getting 700 and 724 megabytes per second, so 647 writes, 725 read, which is pretty respectable. So that's one, one big upgrade that they did was to the PCI flash storage. Um, boot time is ridiculous. Let me go re reboot. And then we'll count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So give it about 13 or 14 seconds to reboot or to start up from a cold boot. That's how much you can get done on, a, on this SSD. It's really nice and it's really fast. Um, okay, so one thing about the uh, retina display itself is uh, I've been reading reports about everyone's retina display. The anti, the anti -cold, um, or the anti-glare coating on the retina displays is rubbing off. Now they don't know why it's happening, but Apple is refusing to fix the. They're refusing to fix the computers where the anti-reflective uh, coating is rubbing off. They're not. They're not fixing it. They say it's a cosmetic issue or like it's user fault, user error, and you're cleaning the uh, display incorrectly. So <clears throat> that's my only concern is the display. Like you know, if if it goes to shit, I expect Apple to fix it. Because this thing costs about $1,500. So, you know, that is what it is. Uh, so I guess that's everything. It's pretty light in the hand. I think it's about three and a half or four pounds. I forget. But it's, it's really light. And it's really thin. And it's got all the I.O. that you need. So this is really a really good laptop. And I just hope... The coating doesn't rub off. Alright, that's about it everyone. Peace.